Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And we're continuing our canter through the course of Polish history. And today we're going to talk about Poland's involvement in the Napoleonic Wars. And I'm joined by Professor Krzysztof Jabłonka. Professor, Poland sort of became involved in the Napoleonic Wars in, in, in 1797. And of course, it is notable in the modern period because this is when the Polish national anthem yeah. will first appear. Can you say some words about how the Polish national anthem came to be written at that time? Pewien historyk obcego pochodzenia, badając historię Polski, wypowiedział pewne bardzo mądre zdanie. A historian of foreign origin, while researching the history of Poland, expressed a very wise opinion that each subsequent uprising started with the fall of the previous one, and this was the case at that moment. It was a Kościuszko uprising, with a giant rush of all the nations of the Republic of Poland, like the last flash of the First Republic. It gave rise to the Polish legions in Italy. These legions were basically composed of three legions, each of the other nations of the Republic. There was a Polish legion, the first one. The second was the Lithuanian legion. The third Roman legion consisted of Ruthenians and was already less formally called Russian or Ukrainian. Then, when Józef Wybicki, an outstanding politician, not a military man, saw the troops forming, he almost immediately wrote a poem in honor of Commander Dombrowski in Cafe de Luterani, in the town of Reggio Emilia, in the northern part of Italy. The poem began with very simple words, Poland has not yet died. Then, Poles would change the words to Poland has not yet perished, so long as we still live. With this very slogan, the legions entered the Polish lands when Napoleon started the Third Coalition War against Prussia. It actually was the fourth such war. The defeated Prussia had to give back the lands that had been seized earlier. First of all, the land of Wielkopolska, and there the first army of the reborn Duchy of Warsaw was formed. Since the invaders sentenced the Polish name to extermination, this land had to be called from its capital. From the capital of these lands, the Duchy of Warsaw, during the treaty in Tulsa with Russia. Russia became an ally of Napoleon and, together with Russia, defeated Austria in 1809. But a little bit earlier, the large Polish troops, not able to feed in the Duchy of Warsaw, were delegated to Napoleon's disposal and set off to Spain. ...możliwości wyżywienia w Księstwie Warszawskim zostały oddelegowane do dyspozycji Napoleona i wyruszyły do Hiszpanii. And of course, Professor, for many people, the, the, the most notable part of the, of, of, of the Polish campaign in Spain was the famous cavalry charge at Soma Sierra. Could you say something about that? Napoleon, in his customary way, went straight for the capital. He knew that if he took the capital, the whole country would quiet down. But on the way to the Spanish capital of Madrid, the road was blocked by the Spanish army, seated in a pass called Soma Sierra, in the Guadalajara range. A Roman road still led through these hills, with beautifully sculpted curbs, so that the legion would fit there. And the most famous charge in the history, not only of Poland, but also of Europe, would set off on this road. That was because measly 184 cavalrymen defeated a 12,000-strong army. This was a phenomenon that would never happen again. How did it come about then? Initially, there were attempts to conquer this pass with only the infantry, but before the infantry arrived, the artillery was able to reach it first, and so the infantry withdrew. The Napoleon nodded at the Polish commander, Hippolit Kozietulski, and showed him the way. When he was told that it was impossible, he said that there were no impossible things for his Poles. Kozietulski realized that the charge that would go through the fields wouldn't have a chance of success, because the fields were boggy, they were soaked in water and horse hooves would collapse in it, which meant that the cavalry was losing strength. So he set his troops on this paved road. The tragedy of this situation came from the fact that four cannons, all able to shoot, were erected in front of this road. 
Indeed, the cannons fired a total of 16 times, four times each, and 16 died. For the price of our 16 fallen cavalrymen, a 12,000 army was defeated, an army which was so terrified that it rushed to escape the battlefield. Some superstitions helped the Polish troops too. These were the times when the Age of Enlightenment has not yet bloomed in Spain. Someone historically shouted that Napoleon had released the devil from his bag. They said, El Diabolo Polaco. The turmoil on the road was so great that nobody knew what was happening there. Polish cavalrymen got to the pass earlier. If it hadn't been for the help of the subsequent squadrons of the cavalry, the Spaniards would have probably taken that pass away from us. However, a diary of one of the participants, Andrzej Niegolewski, has survived. We can read in it that the charge took place on his name day, November 13, 1808. The Spaniards caught up with him and wanted to shoot him, but the gun did not fire. There was such a fog that the firearms simply did not work because of the moisture. After numerous squadrons of Polish fighters, the pass was conquered, the road to Madrid opened, and Napoleon was welcomed a few days later in December by a delegation with the keys to the city placed on a pillow. A cemetery was arranged there. The lives of 16 heroic Poles, two more died in Madrid, was the price of conquering the whole country. This did not happen again. An attempt to repeat the events at Balaklava during the Crimean War ended in a terrible massacre of 600 British cavalrymen and went down in history as a lost cause. It is still unknown how the Poles managed to achieve that feat. That's all we've got time for today, for this episode. So it remains for me to say thank you, Professor, for thank you your fascinating much. commentary on Polish history. Do join us again on Poland Daily History, where we look at the fascinating history of this exciting country.